Hey guys, it's Colin here. This week I'm going to show you how to take a person, cut them out from a sitting position, and put them on top of the building. So this was inspired by all the controversy around Drake and his views from The Six, which is coming out soon. So there's two things going on. One is uh, maybe he's trying to rename Toronto The Six, and Canadians are up in arms about that. And uh, I definitely wouldn't want to get in the way of angry Canadians, even though Drake himself is a Canadian. But anyway, the other side of the controversy is his new album cover. Was he photoshopped on top of the CN Tower, or was he actually there? And this is kind of amusing. It's actually already been confirmed, actually, that he was photoshopped on there. But here's his album cover here. And then we look at, uh, say, for example, on Twitter, there was this big outcry. It's all over the Internet. T-Bone says, you know, if he was on here, he'd have to be 12 feet tall. Really? He can't be. And, of course, this started off even more fun. And all these memes are circulating around the Internet. And, uh, for example, here, here's the Ant-Man, which <laughs> I think is hilarious. There he is sitting on the finger, on the thumb. Yeah. Nice. I love that one. What else we got here? Where's Waldo? That's a good one. <laughs> I guess you can tiny little figure on the top of the building. Yep, definitely um, powerful album cover there. Oh, what else we got? Oh, we got him hanging out there with some of his friends. So, you know, have a look on there. You'll find some really funny memes and stuff that people are doing. So out of all of this, I'm actually going to do something serious. What I'm going to do is take a picture of the CN building. And we're going to take a picture of somebody sitting down. And I'm going to show you how to use Photoshop to do several things. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to extract the body from the subject. Then we're going to combine the images and make him look like he's sitting on top of the building. Uh, we're going to make him even more giant. <laughs> then I'm going to match the tones and the color so that it looks like it fits in there. And finally, we're going to anchor it down by adding a little bit of a shadow. But throughout, you're going to find a bunch of tips and tricks that are going to help you. So whether or not you're interested in this particular project or not, there's a lot of things that you're going to learn and pick up here in Photoshop with this particular tutorial. So I hope you have fun. I had a lot of fun making it. Let's jump in and do it right now. Okay, all the hype and controversy aside, I'm going to give you a useful Photoshop tutorial. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to cut this guy out and put him onto this tower here. You know, just kind of a little homage to Drake's album and all the controversy. So one of the things you want to do when you do take a sitting person and you want to set them on top of an object, it's great to have them already sitting on something. In this case, he's sitting on a chair. And this is good because when he's sitting on another object, it's much easier to transfer that and uh, and keep him in the sitting position. If he's just crouching down, sometimes it can look very unnatural. So this is actually going to work pretty good. Obviously, I can't use the picture of Drake because, uh, you know, copyright violations, etc. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to cut this guy out really quickly. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to combine the images. Then we're going to match the colors and the tones. And then we're going to add a little shadow to just kind of ground them into this subject. So let's start with cutting out our subject. So let's go here. We're going to grab the quick selection tool. And I'm just going to go over and just quickly make a selection over all of our model here. So let's just go over here all the way down. I'm just going to hit the space bar just to kind of move that up a little bit. Now, don't worry if you go over the edges because we're going to clean that up in a sec. I see we just want to make sure, first of all, that we've selected everything. Okay, we've got everything selected. A little bit more of a shoe there. Awesome. Now we're going to clean it up a little bit. I'm going to hit the Alt key on Windows or Option on Mac. And then we're just going to go down here to clean it up. Went over a little bit. Let's just play around. Sometimes it's a little bit of a balancing act to get this. And that little hole there. Don't forget the holes. It's very easy to forget those holes in there. And then it looks very unnatural later on. All right. Now we don't have to get this perfect because our model is actually going to end up being super small. Now, things like this can be very difficult. Shoes and feet are typically the most difficult part of making an extraction. That's not bad. We might have to do a little a manual work to clean that up. And make sure you get little areas like in here. And a quick way to check that 
is to just hit the Q key for quick mask. And then we can make sure we got everything there. Now that looks good. Awesome. All right, so we've made this selection. What we're going to do now is clean it up a little bit because right now the selection is going to be pretty hideous. So we're going to go to Refine Edge. And then under the Refine Edge, we're going to compare them on a white background, which is not bad. There's a couple of little bits that need to be cleaned up. And also in a black background. The black background, in this case, because it's kind of a dark suit he's got here, it's easier to see the white fringes, and we want to make sure we clean those up. So the way to clean that up is to set a radius around here. So we're going to show the radius. Notice there's nothing. And then under radius, we're going to pull this up until we see a little radius around there. So what that's doing is it's giving us an edge there that's going to clean things up. So now if I turn off show radius, notice it's cleaner, and a lot of that white color fringing is now gone. So we can play around with some things like here down in the shoes and that. I'm going to give it a little bit of contrast. Sometimes this cleans up some jaggy rough edges. And we can also smoothen it slightly if we want. And I'm not going to smoothen it though because sometimes that does weird things. I'm going to give it a slight feather. Just half a pixel. And the reason for that is it just enables uh, just better selections on some things. So you'll notice this brush here. You've got two options. Refine edge, uh, the refine radius tool or erase. You just use the option key to make it an erase. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up around the hair with this brush. And this is great for soft edges like that. And notice it just kind of cleans it up. So you can use that for hair, for different things like that. All right, so looking pretty good. Looks like it needs a little bit of cleanup work here on the feet, but I know that this brush is not going to work very well on that if I go there. Oh, actually it did. Oh, it proved me wrong. Okay, so let's go around with that brush. Clean up those edges a little bit. Usually it doesn't work so well on hard edges. But uh, yeah, it gets a little rugged around there sometimes. All right, so we've got a rough selection. It's looking a little bit better. What we're going to do now is we're going to make sure we output to new layer with a layer mask. And then click OK. And there we go. We've got a rough cutout. Notice how those shoes really didn't come out that good. So here's a little tip for cleaning stuff like that up. In this case, once again, because we're using it so small, you're probably not really going to notice it. But what we're going to do is go to the mask here. Under the layer mask, we've selected it there. What we're going to do is if we paint with white, it brings back the areas. If we paint with black, it removes them. So I'm just going to do a little hand work here. I'm just going to hit the D key, reset the foreground background colors. So I went white for my foreground color. Grab the brush. Make sure under the brush we go all the way up to a hard edge brush. Opacity and flow should be at 100 if you're using a pressure sensitive tablet. And then we're just going to paint in these edges. I'm actually even going to go over the lines a little bit because I want to make sure I get all the information I want. All right, so there we go. We're going around the edges of those shoes. Now we're going to hit the X key and now we're painting with black and black is going to enable us to get rid of the areas we don't want just kind of cleaning it up a little bit I'm not going to make this perfect by the way because it's going to be small he's going to be really small you're not going to see a lot of this stuff but I just want to show you these techniques let's smoothen that out because it just looks weird pick that up now one of the things I would normally do is I would start going around this image and try to make it perfect. Like I grab a little tiny brush and start cleaning up little areas like this. And sometimes there's nothing better than the brush tool to uh, clean this up and get everything perfect. But I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing this because I just want to get the general idea here. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to clean this up a little bit. I don't like the way that's working. It just looks weird. Okay, there we go. All right, so there we go. We've got our model all ready to go. So the next step we want to do is we want to combine him into the CN tower over here. So we've got that in the tab there. We've got the image. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select our model, make sure that the layer is selected, not the mask, and click and drag over here and release him. Now, that is humongous, so we need to scale it. So control T or command T for free transform. And right now it's so big, you can't see the boundaries. See the boundaries are there and those little handles are there. Well, here's a little tip for you. 
If you want to scale things and you can't see those handles, click on the link tool up here and then it will link the height and width. What it does is just constrains the proportions and then you can just drag it down a little bit until you see those. And then now that you see them, what we can do is hit the shift key and we can scale it down. If you also hold down the Alt or the Option key, it will scale it from the middle. All right, so let's make it a little bit smaller and we're gonna position our model right on there. In fact, let's make it a little bit smaller yet. And I like it. We're gonna have them sitting right there, just like uh, Drake. Okay, so here's the thing. He looks absolutely humongous. And to be honest, he would have to be really, really tiny to be in scale, but I'm gonna make him a giant just for fun because the actual album cover, they say that <laughs> It would be about, he'd be about 12 feet if we looked at that. So I'm going to even exaggerate it and have some fun. Also it makes it easy for you to see what's going on. Because really what we're looking at is how to add a model to a subject or how to have a person sitting on an object. Okay, so right now we've got the position correct, but the tones are wrong, the colors are wrong, and there's nothing to ground them to it. So what we're going to do is clean that up. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you how to match the tones. Because if you look on here, the grays in his suit, you see the darks, are much lighter than the darks in this image. So we need those to match. So we're going to use curves. So we select our layer, go to an adjustment layer, and then choose curves. And here's our curves dialog box pops up. This is the shadows on this side, highlights on this side. I have another tutorial on Photoshop Cafe that shows you uh, how to use curves. So we're not going to get into all of that now. Um, I, I'll add a little link there, so if you want to see it, check it out. All right, so let's just go. We're going to drag the shadows in a little bit. So we want to set the darkest tones to match the darkest tones. And that's looking pretty good. Let's pull down the shadows a little bit more. But notice what's happening as I'm doing this. Notice it's darkening everything. We don't want that to happen. We only want it to darken our person on here, not the whole photograph. So when you add an adjustment layer, it affects everything. But here's a trick. If you hit this little square there inside the properties panel, boom. What it does now is it will only affect that layer directly underneath it and it won't affect any of the other layers. So now we're adjusting this independently. Looking better. All right, let's do a little bit of contrast here in the highlights. Okay, that's looking better as far as matching the tones. Maybe it's a little dark. Let's just come back just a smidge. There we go. All right, so we've matched the tones. All right, so one of the things you'll notice right now, the colors don't quite match. He's a little bit warmer than this. You can see there's a little bit of a blue tinge to this. So here's an easy way to do that. Let's go straight to our curves, double click to open up our curves. Notice they're there. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go into the colors here and we're gonna take the reds. And then what we wanna do is around about the mid-tones there, I'm just gonna pull the reds down slightly. See that? Now it's letting some of the blues through. Now let's pull that down. There we go. A little bit better. And let's do the same thing with the greens. I'm going to pull those greens down a little bit and that will make them look a little bit more blue. Let's go back to the blues. Back to the reds, I mean. There we go. And the reason I'm not boosting the blues, which would be really easy if I just went into the blues here and said, hey, you know, just add some blue. The problem with that is it adds too much saturation. And if we look at this image, it's already a little bit desaturated. So we kind of want to make it match that way. So we've got a little bit better color now. So if we look at this before and after, here's our matching. That's how it was before when we first brought it in. And then after, see how it matches a little bit better. And you may just go here and go back. And let's pull that down a little bit. Maybe it's a little bit dark. And just fix that a little bit. There we go. Looking good. All right, what we want to do now is we're going to anchor him to the subject because right now he looks like he's just floating there. We want to anchor him with a shadow. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate this layer to, uh, so we're just going to hit Control J or Command J and we've just duplicated that layer. So now we have two copies of it. So just remember, of course, that the one here with our adjustment layer is going to be affecting that one directly underneath. So I'm just going to do a little tweaking in a sec. But first of all, I just want to fill this one with black. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this mask by right clicking and I'm going to apply the layer mask. So now we've got that as our layer and I'm going to show you how to fill that with black. Just hit D to reset the foreground background colors. 
Notice that we have black as a foreground color. If I was to hit Alt or Option Backspace, it would fill everything with black. We don't want to do that. We want to preserve the transparency. So what we do is we add the Shift key. So Alt, Shift, Backspace, or Option, Shift, Backspace, depending if you're using Mac or Windows, fills that with black. Now I take that, drag it down to the bottom here, and make sure, once again, that this is still clipped there, because notice it got darker, because that moved it. Typically speaking, you would do the filling underneath, I just and you wouldn't have to deal with that, but I wanted to do it so you could see what I was doing. And then what we're going to do is we're going to position that. Let me zoom in a little bit more so we can see this better. There we go. All right, so let's think about where the shadows are happening. Whoops. <laughs> I meant to hit the space bar to move this around. So where are these shadows happening? Look, it's, they're coming down, so it means the sun's above. It's hitting on the right side, means the sun's on the left side. So that means the sun's coming from this direction. And the little white fringe around his hair is good because the light would actually be hitting him about there. All right, so with our shadow selected, we're just going to drag that into position. So I'm just going to drag that into position there. Maybe down a little bit. There we go. And what we want to do is soften it. So we're going to blur it. Just going to choose the filter blur. And we're going to grab a Gaussian blur and make this soft. Not that soft. Let's try it a little softer. Maybe about there. Yeah, that's pretty good. And we're going to drop the opacity down to maybe 30%. Let's see where it looks good. Yeah, about there looks good, which is a little bit more, 43%. Awesome. Okay, so finally we have one little problem here. See how the shadows are kind of looking good? They're matching and we can move them around, by the way, like that. But we've got them up here. We don't want that. So we're just going to add a layer mask and then paint with black. Just grab a brush and we're just going to paint it out from behind them. There we go. So it doesn't look so fake because at this point, shadows wouldn't be hitting because uh, the part of the object is further away. So we've got the shadows just there by his feet. So there we go. So there's our image here. We've managed to put Drake on top of the CN Tower. I hope you had a lot of fun with that tutorial and there's some good techniques there that you can use and pick up and just put into your arsenal of tips and techniques that you use. So anyway, add a comment here. Let me know what you thought. Any things that you picked up here that were new that maybe you didn't know before. Some suggestions for some episodes later on. Some Q&A that I can add to my questions and answers later. And even if you've got some great memes that you have here of the whole Drake controversy, I'd love to see what you think about it. If you're a Canadian, are you upset? What do you think about him wanting to change the name of Toronto? Or is it just a big, huge conspiracy theory? Anyway, don't forget to subscribe. Hit that big, ugly subscribe button. So don't forget to tune in every week because I add a new Photoshop or Lightroom tutorial every week and the occasional drone tutorial. So thanks for watching. Uh, until next time, I will see you at the cafe. Oh, by the way, follow me on Instagram because I'm adding a new picture every single day to Instagram. So check it out. And don't forget, subscribe. I'll wait. I'll wait while you subscribe. Go on. I know you want to hit that subscribe link. Man, I'm pushy, I know. <laughs> Go on. Hit the subscribe link.